Welcome to the daily word for the season of Lent. Today's reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter forty-two, verses one to seventeen. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons. Why do you keep looking at one another? I have heard, he said, that there is grain in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he feared that harm might come to him. Thus, the sons of Israel were among the other people who came to buy grain, for the famine had reached the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land. It was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. But he treated them like strangers and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He said. They said. From the land of Canaan, to buy food. Although Joseph had recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Joseph also remembered the dreams that he had dreamed about them. He said to them, "You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land." They said to him, "No, my lord, your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men." Your servants have never been spies. But he said to them, "No, you have come to see the nakedness of the land." They said, "We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of a certain man in the land of Canaan." The youngest, however, is now with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, "It is just as I have said to you. You are spies. Here is how you shall be tested. As Pharaoh lives." You shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Let one of you go and bring your brother, while the rest of you remain in prison, in order that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you. Or else, as Pharaoh lives, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in prison for three days. This is the word of the Lord. Recognition and reconnecting. Joseph is now a governor in Egypt and of great standing in the land of his exile. He meets face to face with the ten brothers who sold him into slavery, and had taken him for dead over twenty years earlier. Their father Jacob sees that to survive, they must get grain to eat, 
and he is told or has seen that the people of Egypt have more than enough grain. If you remember, it was Joseph's doing that the people of Egypt had stored the grain in times of plenty, and he had been shown by God in a dream that there would be famine in the land. Now his brothers, who failed to recognise him as their younger brother, both now and in the past, because if you remember, Joseph and Benjamin both shared Rachel as their mother. The older brothers had a different mother. Still, the brothers bow down and ask for his charity, to give them grain to take back to the land of Canaan. Joseph had already known in his dreams that there were twelve sons of Jacob. Here he sees ten sons, and he knows he is the eleventh, so where is the last son? still to be accounted for, the one who he needs to see before seeing his father Jacob again. So he accuses the ten sons of being spies, that they have come to spy on the land of Egypt in order to gain knowledge of where the grain is stored and how the Egyptians have managed to keep food when everyone else is starving. Joseph tells his brothers that they will be kept in prison until their remaining brother is brought to join them. I can't help think that there is a double meaning here, that the brothers immediately thought of Benjamin, who was at home in Canaan with Jacob, but that really Joseph was trying to get them to recognise their brother who was standing in front of them, who they had treated so badly before, and who they had rejected because of their jealousy that he was the favourite with their father Jacob. It isn't until much later that their eyes are open to see who Joseph really is. How many times in our lives have we looked at people or events with certain blinkers or a different lens, not really appreciating what is in front of us, as we are too caught up in the immediate need of our own jobs or lives? How easy it is to pass by the stranger or person in the street without really looking at them and appreciating them for what and who they are. It is so much easier to label people as a certain type, or a certain race, or a certain colour, rather than fully appreciating that they, like us, have the same feelings, the same emotions, and the same needs as we do. As we are reminded on so many occasions, the stranger yet to be met may be an angel in disguise. Although Joseph appears to be harsh in his dealings with his brothers, he can be forgiven as he has had a life separated from his family by the actions of those who stood before him. But unlike his brothers, he wishes them no wrong, but instead uses them to bring Benjamin to him and to save Israel from the famine. God has used Joseph to bring succour to the people of the land of Canaan. Let us have a time of reflection. How might God be using you to bring help to others? Have you ever entertained a stranger only to find out a deeper connection that you were unaware of at the time? Do we see the stranger in the street as truly our brother or sister? Let us pray. Most Heavenly Father, you have made us in your own image and have given us the ability to love with our whole heart. Help us to recognise you in every encounter we make with people yet to be known to us, people who we call strangers, who are yet to become friends. 
Help us to be faithful as members of your human race, to call all people brother or sister, and to love them as part of our family. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who loved us and gave his own life for us, that we might have life in all its fullness. Amen. <laughs>